Would you ever want to visit another dimension? Go to a parallel universe that is very similar to ours, but it's just not quite right? Many say there is a ritual you can follow in order to do just that. Hey humans, it's Hannah. Welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here, I do videos on creepy and disturbing things. So if that's also your thing, consider subscribing down below. Now, there's a lot of urban legends out there that basically have you follow these weird rituals, either in a basement or driving, things like that, in order to get into some really dark and messed up stuff and basically summon the occult, summon other paranormal things, it's risky. And while I'm skeptical that any of this is true, I'm also not skeptical enough to try it myself. However, one of the best rituals out there has to be the elevator game. The elevator game originated in South Korea or possibly has some roots in Japan, nobody has really confirmed, but it's said that if you follow this ritual, you will be taken to another dimension. And if you don't do the ritual correctly, then you could be trapped there forever. So here's the game and here's what you do just in case you want to play it. You need a public building with at least 10 floors and an elevator. To start the game, the player needs to go into the elevator on floor one. Now, this is extremely important. When you're doing any of these steps, do not go forward. Do not proceed if somebody enters the elevator in the middle of the game. If this happens, do not play on. You have to wait for them to exit the elevator and then you have to start over. So here it is. Go into the elevator on the first floor. Press the fourth floor. Once you get there, press the second floor. Once you get there, press the sixth floor. Once you're there, go back to the second floor. When you're on the second floor, go to the 10th floor. When you're on the 10th floor, press the fifth floor. On the fifth floor is where the game will start to get scary. When the fifth floor doors open, a woman may or may not be there and she may or may not get on the elevator with you. Under no circumstance should you look at her, should you speak to her, acknowledge her whatsoever, completely ignore her. That woman is posing as a human, but she's not a human. And she may just decide to take you if you engage with her in any way. So here's the most fun step. Once she's in the elevator with you, or if she's not, whatever happened, press the first floor again. The elevator may or may not go to the first floor. It may take you to the first floor, or it may just ascend beyond your wishes and take you back to the 10th floor. If the elevator does take you to the first floor as you instructed it to do, then the game did not work, but do not try again. Just leave and do not look back. This is a sign that you should just stay in the correct world where you belong. If the elevator does ascend and goes up to the 10th floor, that means that the game worked and you're being currently led to the other dimension. If the woman who we talked about earlier did get on on floor five, at this point she's going to start badgering you. She's going to ask you, where are you going? What's wrong? Her voice is going to be super high. She's going to act really annoyed. She may be really, really, really insistent. She may be super rude to try to get a reaction out of you. No matter what, do not acknowledge her. This is her trick. So if the game works and you get to the 10th floor, you can either get out and go to the next dimension or you can stay where you are. If you reach the 10th floor and you decide to get out and you happen to be alone, then that means the game worked and you're in the other world. The woman should stay on the elevator and not follow you out. When you're in the other world, electronics may or may not work there. People have said both versions in their own experience that their electronics worked, but then others say that they don't at all. This other dimension is going to be pretty much identical to your old world, except all the lights will be off and the only thing you'll see out the windows in the distance is a red cross. I don't advise that you go to the red cross. Apparently that's another trick. So you're in this other dimension and you need to return. It is actually possible to return to the original world. So you decided to go out and explore. In order to get back to your correct world, you must find the exact same elevator and do the exact same ritual. So again, go to floor four, two, six, two, ten, five. And then when you reach the fifth floor, press the button for the first floor. This is very important. The elevator will ascend to the 10th floor anyway when you press this button. Don't panic. Instead of going to the 10th floor, keep pressing the one button. Press it over and over and over until it works. Going to the 10th floor is trying to suck you back in and keep you in the incorrect dimension, but if you keep pressing the button, it should work and you should be able to get back. You must press this button before you reach the 10th floor or you may be gone forever. So then it does seem like it goes to the first floor and it 
feels like you're in the clear, well, before you get out of the elevator, make sure to look around at your surroundings and make sure that everything looks good. If anything looks even slightly off, don't get out. If you just feel like something's wrong in your gut, don't get out, do the ritual again, keep doing it until it works and the surroundings seem correct. And then once you're confident that you've actually made it back to your own world, then you can exit the elevator and go about your day. If you decide not to get out on the 10th floor and you made it to the other dimension, but you changed your mind and you don't wanna actually go out into this dimension, you have to press the first floor button from the 10th floor. If it doesn't work, keep pressing it repeatedly again until it does. When it reaches the first floor, again, don't look back and don't speak just go. So that's how you play the game and I'm here to tell you why you shouldn't. Basically playing this game can get super tricky. It's actually kind of hard to make it back from that dimension if you succeed in going there. It's actually way harder than it seems to keep your focus. It's hard not to get distracted. It's hard not to kind of go crazy. Like I said, the woman, if she shows up, it's really hard to not engage with her. And all of these things will make returning really hard. Or you may be so disoriented in the other dimension that you cannot find your way back to the elevator elevator that you arrived in. And even if you think you have the right elevator, it might not be the right elevator. The ritual also might make you faint, pass out, or lose consciousness. And then you could likely just wake up in your own home thinking that everything's fine. But the home in which you end up may not be the one that you left. The people in your home may exist and be there, but maybe they look just slightly off and you did accidentally make a mistake and get to some wrong dimension. Just generally. It's not a good idea to play. If you fail the game once, you must also not attempt it too many times. It could make you susceptible to slipping into the other worlds. Not a good idea to mess with it too much. Now we're gonna talk about a quote unquote real life case of this happening, but it's not what you think I'm gonna talk about. So I know that a lot of you who already know what this game is are probably thinking of Elisa Lamb at this point. This is the girl that died under very, very, very weird circumstances back in 2013 at the Cecile Hotel. Her body was found without clothes on in a water tank. And then there was this really odd surveillance footage that they found of her the night that she passed away in this hotel's elevator and she's pressing different buttons and acting really strange. Her death is still a mystery to this day. Nobody Nobody knows officially what caused her death or how she got in the water tank. A lot of people speculate that she was playing the elevator game and that caused her ultimate demise. If you look on any elevator game forums, somebody always brings her up. And I'm actually not here to speculate how strange it is and how she might have really done that. I'm here to tell you to stop with that freaking narrative. Stop bringing her up in the context of the elevator game. It really frustrates me. Mini rant here. First of all, just think about her family. And if I need to say much more than that, then that's kind of sad but think about her family it's just super disrespectful it cheapens her death and everybody basically is kind of low-key blaming her for her own death because they're saying that she played this game and if she hadn't played the game she wouldn't have died which is just absurd and just extremely again disrespectful to her family and think about if this was one of your family members and this happened to them and they died in this super tragic way think about how you would feel if everybody on the internet used it to perpetuate their game and again just make it seem like her death was somehow related to the paranormal. It's just, it doesn't help anybody. Second of all, there's no evidence whatsoever that she was actually playing this game. Just because somebody found her acting weird on an elevator, she wasn't following any of the rules of this game. It would have been one thing if she had pressed the actual order of the buttons that are as they're listed in the game and we saw her do that but she's getting in and out you're not supposed to do that there's no part of this footage that makes her look like she's actually trying to play this game or prove that there's any evidence that this game is more than an urban legend third of all elisa was actually known to have some sort of mental health condition and it is possible that that contributed to her death. So again, that's also not only more likely than her playing some paranormal game, but it also makes it extremely tragic and extremely devastating for her family. So we really need to stop acting like she was playing a game by herself in the middle of the night in a hotel. I just encourage everybody to stop spreading this rumor and think about it as if it was one of your loved ones. I hate to even bring this up at all and you might be asking why I even am if I don't think it should be talked about with the elevator game, but I bring it up because somebody in the comments will tell me what about Elisa Lamb and then I will have to explain it to them. So I'd rather just put it in the video. I love the game, but we don't need to bring up some completely irrelevant and tragic event into an internet legend. So 
Moving on. There's also a lot of videos on YouTube of people attempting this game and filming their results. I have yet to seen one that is very convincing and I've watched a lot of them. Some of them are just JStation type videos where you know it's all set up. If anything actually happens, they completely set it up and it's all fake. Or there are some genuine videos out there where nothing really happens, but maybe just a couple like ooh, weird creepy things just to make it not super boring. But then it's like either way, the videos are not convincing because if something happens, people think it's set up. If nothing happens, happens then it's a boring video. There's also a ton of Reddit stories and recollections of people talking about their experiences playing this game and what happened to them. I think the reason we love these types of rituals and these stories so much is because we get to read a story but also kind of be a part of this paranormal world in a really hands-on way. It's something that you could actually participate in and do in the real world and give you an opportunity to get an adrenaline rush and experience something horrifying. Even if nothing happens, tell me you wouldn't be really scared following this ritual on an elevator. So what do you think? Do you, have you ever heard of this before? Do you think you'd ever try this yourself? Do you think maybe you'd try it with friends, even though that may or may not break the rules of the game? Or do you think you wouldn't touch this with a 10 foot pole like me? I don't think I would do it. I don't believe in it, but clearly I do a little bit because I wouldn't do it because I'd be too scared. Please comment below and let me know your thoughts. And thank you so much for watching any of my videos and I will see everybody in the next one.